Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk to you about a web app prototype for offline image classification. This is a cross-platform application where users can classify images selected locally or taken with their device's camera using React and TensorFlow.js. So to back up a bit and provide some background, let's first go over the common overarching use case or requirement behind all this, the ability to perform inferences offline and in the field. For example, let's say a team of researchers have built a deep learning model from data they have collected over the years, and this model classifies different species of parasites. Now they would like to leverage this model to perform ecological surveys in remote areas of Africa where the parasites might be common. However, due to the nature of their research, they are often in areas where internet connectivity is sparse or simply non-existent. So ideally, not only do the researchers need an app that will help classify offline, they also need it available in a portable format, like on their mobile devices. One common solution is to create native apps for mobile platforms which will package and load a compressed version of their models. However, this typically has the overhead of needing developers with expertise in Android or iOS development in order to correctly hook in their models. So here, I am going to cover an alternative, easier way to satisfy this offline mobile requirement by creating a progressive web application, or PWA for short. A progressive web app is a type of application delivered through the web using simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They give a native app-like feel and can run on most modern web browsers. Furthermore, through the use of service workers, progressive web apps can provide fully offline functionality. So let's jump in and see how the app works. The code and more in-depth information can be found in the repository linked in the description below. To implement the UI components, React will be used. For performing inference in the browser, we will be using TensorFlow.js. TensorFlow.js allows us to convert our pre-trained TensorFlow or Keras models into a web-friendly format. Furthermore, to allow us to load the model offline, we will take advantage of a client-side storage API called IndexedDB to store and reload the model. So before even setting up the app, let's first focus on getting a model. Here we will be starting with a pre-trained MobileNet Keras model downloaded through the Keras Applications API. Now this is a model meant for image classification across the 1000 ImageNet categories it was trained on. These are lightweight models, so perfect for mobile devices. However, feel free to use any other Keras or TensorFlow image classification model, even if they are larger in size. We just have to be able to convert it using TensorFlow.js Converter. So TFJS Converter is a Python library that can convert models that are in formats such as TensorFlow Saved Model and Keras HDF5. It converts it into a nice web-friendly format that we can use in our JavaScript application. All we gotta do is run the file through the Converter tool, and this should generate a directory with the converted model files. You should see a model.json file in there, as well as several sharded binary files. With the model downloaded, let's get into the app itself. The app here was bootstrapped with Create React App. It's an easy way to set up a React application with one command, and by default, the build process will generate a service worker file, but it will not be registered. Once we register it in the index.js file, our app will become a cache-first app, which enables the offline functionality we want. Now, a service worker is a script that runs in the background separate from the web page. With the service worker, static assets are cached so that subsequent visits to the web app load fast regardless of network state. Updates are downloaded in the background when network connectivity is available. So you only really need internet access on the first visit to install or cache the app assets. So what about the model files, which can end up being quite large in size and possibly not suitable for the service worker cache? Well, lucky for us, TensorFlow.js allows us to store models in IndexedDB, the client-side storage API I mentioned earlier. IndexedDB is a JavaScript-based object-oriented database. It lets you store and retrieve objects that are indexed with a key and can be useful for significant amounts of data. Most modern web browsers support this feature. So like with the service worker caching static assets, we will have the app store the downloaded model into IndexedDB on the first load. Subsequent loads to the page will retrieve the model from IndexedDB if it is available. This saves from having to continually re-download the model, saving time and bandwidth. Once we load the model, TensorFlow.js will leverage the device GPU through WebGL to perform inferences locally. So with these components together, we have something that can be run completely offline. Here you can see that even with no internet connection, I am able to refresh and load the web app and perform a classification. 
and with responsive design from React Bootstrap, our CSS framework, we have something mobile friendly too. But to make it even more mobile friendly, we have something called a web app manifest, the manifest.json file found in the public directory of the project. This is a file that is also generated by the Create React App tool. This simple JSON file tells the browser about your web app and how it should behave when, quote, installed on the user's mobile device or desktop. Here you can specify things like the icon to use when the app is installed on the mobile home screen, and also the app's display mode. Specifying the display mode as standalone makes the app look and feel like a standalone native app, even though it is actually running in a browser. The typical browser UI elements, like the address bar, are just hidden. Since content is served cache or storage first, what if we want to serve new content to the end user? For this, when new content is available and a new service worker is ready to be installed, the user is notified with a prompt to reload the page and get the latest changes. For updating the pre-trained model, we use a server API endpoint to query the date the model on the server was last updated. If the app can hit the endpoint and detects the locally saved model is older than the model on the server, the user is given the prompt with the option to update. With all of this, we have a progressive web app that allows users to select the local image of an object or put the object in frame using their camera. Built-in browser camera support is given through the Web Media Devices API, but users can also choose to use the device's camera app by selecting the app when going through the Select Local File option. Once an image is selected, users can hit the Classify button and local inference will then be performed, where the top five results will be given. This is something that can definitely be used in the field without internet connectivity. And so that about covers it. To learn more or to see all of the code for this app, just follow the link in the description below. Hope you learned something today, and thanks for watching.